and we were ordered to Fort Ritchie, Maryland, and it, it was a counterintelligence school. That's where we first went into intelligence. And the whole point of it was we were all fitted out for to wear Japanese uniforms. And we didn't know what the reason was at that time. And uh, what we did was uh, we wore Japanese leggings and shoes, the rubber shoes, and carried the Japanese rifles and had a Japanese helmet with a star on it. And I was one of the bigger guys, so they had a hard time finding a uniform to fit me because these are all captured uniforms. And the point was that we were supposed to act like Japanese soldiers. And they were training us in Japanese and Japanese military commands and having us do exercises, maneuvers around the lake at Fort Ritchie. And uh, they told us at the time that what they were going to do is, I think there were maybe 40 or 50 of us there, and they were going to use us as uh, troops to take to the different basic training places to uh, parade us around and show the all the other American troops that this is what your enemy looks like. And we couldn't believe what they were planning to do, but of course we were soldiers, so we had to follow orders. And I think there could have been a more ulterior motive in mind, because if we had learned well enough, you know, we could have been dropped behind the lines, I guess. But they, they didn't ever tell us that. After about six months of this, uh, four months, maybe four months of this, the, I think the Army realized that we never looked like Japanese soldiers, really, because we didn't act like it. And uh, then we got, they disbanded the unit and shipped us to Fort Snelling for military language training. 